All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 1997 Toyota Celica GT. Up front is a 2.2 liter inline four and down below is a five speed manual transmission. Now guys, I am super excited to be driving this here Celica GT for a couple of different reasons. First of all, I have never driven a Celica before. This is actually my first ever Celica of any generation. But the second reason is the fact that this is the GT. Now, for 1997, there were two trim levels offered here in America. The ST, which was the base model, and that got a 1.8 liter. And then this, the GT that got the 2.2 liter. This is the one that you want. Now, unfortunately, here in America, we did not get the four wheel drive version of this car. However, the rest of the world did. Japan and Europe actually got a four wheel drive version, but this is just the front wheel drive GT, contrary to what the rear wing says. Before we get on with the video, if you're looking to sell your car, click the link in the description below. Cashforcars.com is looking to buy your car with a clean title, salvage title, running, non-running, whatever it is, get a quick and easy free quote with the link down in the description below. And once you agree upon the price, they will pick up your car in less than 24 hours. You don't even have to get off the couch. But let's get back to that 2.2 liter inline four. I'm putting the horsepower and torque up on the screen. It is a pretty peppy engine. It's fun to drive, it's fun to rev out. It's a dual overhead cam, fuel injected 2.2 liter, which the ST, the 1.8, was actually a single overhead cam engine. And while the GT won't rip your face off, it is pretty fun to drive. And it's fun to just row through the gears. Speaking of gears, it is a five-speed manual transmission. However, the Celica was offered with a four-speed automatic. This is the five-speed manual, and it clicks right into gear. That Toyota feeling that I've come so accustomed to in MR2s and Camrys and all other Toyota products, they shift into gear really nice, really well, and it has a nice solid feeling. Last but not least, like I said, this is actually a front wheel drive Celica. Unfortunately, we did not get the all wheel drive version here. So front wheel drive will have to do. So let's talk about the interior. We have a couple interesting things to talk about in here. Well, in front of me, I have three main gauges. On the far left is my tachometer. Then in the center, I have my speedometer. And on the right, I have my coolant temperature and fuel. These are very, very Toyota gauges. Very simple, very easy to read. And I like that a lot. The steering wheel actually doesn't have any buttons on it. It is the 90s pillowy sort, so it does have an airbag, but it's quite large. And to the right of that, I have my gauge dimmer switch and a climate control vent. And on the door, I have my power windows, power locks, and power mirrors, which is nice that this gets power adjusting mirrors, especially for 1997, not a very common 90s feature. In the center, I do get a digital clock, two climate control vents, the radio has since been changed out. It would normally be a double DIN radio, but it has been swapped out for an aftermarket single DIN. That's why there's that little extra space below it. Then I have my climate controls. Nothing really too crazy here. Obviously fan speed, where to send it, how hot I want it, things like that. Then down below that, 12 volt outlet and a nice little cubby hole. And then the shifter. The shifter actually feels like it's sitting down low. It, it's lower than I expected. I expected the center console to be up a little higher. However, it's not, and that's okay. But to finish out the center console, I do have an ashtray in the middle, but I do have a small little center console. Now the seats actually are decently comfortable. However, my seating position, I'm very close to hitting the ceiling. I'm 5'11", and it's not the easiest car to sit in. I can feel my hairs kind of rubbing on the headliner. Now, I do have the haircut of the delinquent, so maybe that factors into it, or the fact that I have a sunroof, which sunroofs actually do bring the headliner down a little bit in cars, but the seats themselves are nice and comfortable. They have the typical Toyota rip. Every Toyota gets this rip that's this sort of cloth, but I like the cloth, and I think the cloth looks more period correct, looks better in my opinion than leather vehicles of the same era. The leather by now has cracked, torn, and split. But these cloth cars, they're still trucking, baby. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats. This is a coupe, and you guys know I hate coupe back seats, but I do it for the fans. And I will do a back seat review of the Celica GT. Here we go. You guys know I absolutely hate getting in the back of coupes. Ugh. 
All right, so we're in the back of the 97 Celica GT. Headroom is terrible. Legroom is terrible. I can't even move the seat back. This is for children, maybe. I mean, even then, that's kind of mean for you to do to a kid. I mean, that's going to leave some emotional scarring that therapy can't quite fix. These seats are really if you need them seats. And I'm sure for whatever insurance or whatever you want to call it, they didn't want to make a full two-seater, but man, they should have. This is not great back here. However, we do have a hatch. We'll take a look at that real quick. All right, so we're on the back of the Celica GT. Pop the trunk here. These struts have decided to give up after 23 years. And to be honest, I don't blame them, so have I. Um, but the trunk is huge. I mean, it's not really coming across on camera super great. Oh, they decided to try again, just like my college career. Um, so this is actually huge cargo space, and this is a huge advantage of the hatch. They did sell these in coupes, um, but this is the hatch version. I mean, look at that easy access to coilovers if that's something you wanted to do. We have these nice Celica floor mats as well. I mean, overall, this is a huge, huge plus to the Celica is just the size of this trunk, and that's why you get a hatchback like this. I mean, that is just great. Now we gotta talk about the looks. And I was talking to the owner, Carlos, about the looks before I got into the car. And what's really, really surprising to me is that I've always thought that these Celicas were kind of ugly, but the more and more I look at it, the more and more it started to really make sense to me. Literally, the more I look, the more I like, which I really didn't expect to do that. I mean, just take the front end of the car at first. Yeah, there's that meme where like, if you look right, you kind of see a face in either of the headlights because it's four eyes but also the inner lights their cowls i guess their housings actually go onto the hood you see those sort of lines going onto the hood as well i really really like that i like that attention to detail really makes it feel like a rally car i like the back end of it i like the design of the tail lights i think they look really well again i, I want to get out there that wing on the back is not factory that is a factory wing for the all-wheel drive version but like i said we didn't get that here in america and this is a u.s spec celica and so this is like ipas to me where i hated ipas when i first turned 21 i, I absolutely hated them now, I'm not a huge fan of them, but they're definitely, definitely growing on me. And the Celica is definitely, definitely growing on me. I'm sure by the time I edit this video and I edit the thumbnail and get the pictures processed, I'm gonna like the car even more than I like it currently. It's just something that really, really grows on you. And I like that. It, it's an acquired taste of vehicles. And so let's talk about my final thoughts on the Celica GT. Well, I have a couple of them. First of all, this car is really fun to drive. It's really engaging. I can row through the gears. I'm having fun doing the speed limit right now. And the car doesn't feel like it wants to off itself. Granted, there are some beeps and squeaks and rattles, but this car has 228, almost 230,000 miles on it. So it's gonna have some beeps, squeaks, and rattles. Yeah. But that being said, like I said, it is fun to drive. I am enjoying myself. This is entertaining and it's engaging. That's what I look for in a fun car to drive. Is it engaging? Speaking of engaging, I present to you the ND Miata. Another very fun, engaging car. But it doesn't need tons and tons of horsepower like the Pontiac GTO that's flying up on me in a school zone. What's this jabroni doing? What are you doing? Chill out. I know, I don't have a V8, but I don't need a V8 in this car. This car is fun. This car is entertaining. It's like that Miata mentality of driving a slow car fast rather than a fast car slow. And the other thing about this that I want to point out, my other final thought, my more important buyer's guide final thought is the fact that this car is really, really reliable. 90s Toyotas, time and time again, every time I drive one, I am just reminded of the fact of how stupid reliable this generation of cars is. Late 80s through the 90s Toyotas are really, really reliable. And why do I say that? Well, first of all, this car has, like I said, 228,000 miles on it. And it's still running, it's still working, original engine, original transmission. Yeah, it's had a wheel bearing go out, sure, but so is every car. 
These things are reliable, and so you can buy one with 150, 200,000 miles on it, and you can still enjoy it. You can still have fun, and you're not going to be buying a complete money pit for the most part. Of course, it will have 200,000 mile car problems. You should probably update a couple of the coolant hoses and you know, definitely do a fluid swap and things like that, but that's for all cars. The other thing is that there's a couple rattles in here, but not much. Again, 228,000 miles and everything still works. Everything still has its place. Parts aren't falling off while I'm driving this car. And I think that speaks volumes to Toyota reliability of the 90s. I said it with my 89 Camry review, and I'm saying it again with my 97 Celica review. Toyota just knew what they were doing. It really feels like when they put this car together, they had a design team go through with a fine tooth comb, and they had a board meeting about how they would mount the dashboard to the chassis. They had a board meeting about how the gauge dimmer switch knob would feel. It feels like they had a board meeting about the precise thickness of the side bolsters of the seats. Everything in here feels well calculated, well thought out, and it's just true 23 years later. This car came out the year I was born, and I have to say, I think the Celica is faring just as well as I am, if not maybe a little bit better. All right, GTO guy, chill. And so that's it. This car is a mix between the Camry and the Supra. And from a driving standpoint, I have to say it's more Supra than Camry. It's fun, man. It's very, very fun. And it's not going to leave me stranded. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Carlos for letting me take out his Celica GT. He is absolutely awesome. He hit me up and I, I said I have to drive that thing. It looks so cool and I've never done one before and I'm so glad that I finally got my butt into the seat of one of these really cool and really iconic cars. The seventh gen Celica is just the coolest. And so with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care guys.